darling. Wake up. I'm awake. I wish I wasn't. He pushed her roughly out of his arms. What? And she saw the ugly black snout of the gun appear. And she felt a numbness in her knees and ankles. Martha knew she dare not move. She must not startle him. Carefully, she shifted her eyes to the door. She realized, in a blinding flash, she did not want to die. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davidson, for a most suspenseful reading. Mm -hmm. So that concludes our series on local authors. We'll have a short Q&A, and then for those of you interested, Muriel will have copies of her novel to sign at our signing table. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Davidson? Yeah. So what happens to Martha Sullivan? You have to read the book to find out. <laughs> Kia. Ms. Davidson, do you think this woman's behavior is relevant to today? I mean, enslaving herself sexually to get money to get a man out of prison. It's true that most people wouldn't behave the way Martha did, but the point is she's ill and she's acting out her illness. Um, but I don't think it's time specific. I mean, I think it's, uh, it could happen to anybody, anytime, anyplace. Even an ordinary woman? I mean, you, you really think an ordinary loving woman could become so obsessed with a lunatic that she'd leave everything for him? I mean, even her child? Do you know, I got the idea for this book from an article that I wrote about women who fell in love with killers, thinking that they were the only ones who understood them. And what was so surprising to me was that these women were perfectly ordinary women. Gee, I don't know. The guy's in jail, he can't abandon you. Your Wednesday woman only has Wednesdays free. Girls can't afford to waste time. Well, watch out for Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was Thank you. You're great. Thank you. Tell him. No, just tell him that the station guarantees confidentiality. And see what he has to say. Okay? And get back to me. Sure. Good. Bye. Why are you cleaning that fish bowl? Well, in case I get another fish. Yeah, well, why don't you wait till you get another fish? Well, I might be busy then. Who might be busy? Me. Hi, Mom. Hi. How was your reading? Great. I signed 41 copies. Yuck. And the audience was great. They asked really intelligent questions. Yeah? Who was there? Anybody we know? No, I think our friends are tired of being groupies. Can everybody talk somewhere else so I can do my homework? I thought you were cleaning your fish bowl. I was, but now I'm going to do my homework. Come on, Mimi. This is family turf. <laughs> Fine. Bye. Give you that sense. That's all. That's... Maybe I'll just move out for the next six years. Oh, well, I would die. <laughs> Nan said it was the best reading of the whole series, you know, which is, is great because now that I finally got the hang of it, I, I don't get to do any more. And, you know, I, I didn't blush once. they have been so proud of me, even when, uh, when I read the part about how Everett uh, takes Martha and he gets her down on the floor. And no, 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 come on, no, no, no. I just don't get that excited about your book, you know? Okay.
Hi, hon. What you doing? Just looking for some notes. Do we need to have this bottle sitting around here all the time still? I could put that away. Did you eat? Uh-huh. You okay? Everything all right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just feeling kind of at loose ends, that's all. Oh, well, that's that old postpartum you get when you just finish a project. We've all had that. The only solution for that, I'm afraid, is to start a new one. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, well, so you go back to the magazine. George Vick's always pestering you to write a new article and you take him up on it. Been sitting around here all day doing nothing, getting depressed. We both know where that leads. Lean on, Bill. Well, when I'm right, I'm right. I'm not arguing with you. Okay, good. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, sweetie. Good day. Give me a hug. Bye. So have you got your homework? Yes. Have you got a dentist appointment after school? I remember. Bye. Bye. I love you. Love you, too. Have an open assignment on Larry Good, where our new chief of police eats lunch. The nearest burger joint, like every other cop passed. Oh, no, Jim Bascoigne was it. Richard Gere's infatuation with Buddhism. Okay. <laughs> oh, here's one for you, Muriel. Want to do a profile on an ex-con. Oh, please, Vic. Ben, they're done that. I'm not talking about Megan's Law or Michael Milken. These are guys who had good jobs, got into a little trouble, did their time, then got out, only to find out society will not let them reintegrate. Maybe you should hire one, George. Look at this. A stockbroker. Stockbrokers lose me money. Okay. An aerospace tech. He's sweeping a hangar in a small airport in Boundary. He claims he was framed. Don't we all? Don Wigelow? In the flesh. Who are you? Muriel Davidson from District Magazine. District Magazine? Mm -hmm. I think someone probably contacted you. We're doing an article on ex-cons. Ex-cons? You mean like ex-husbands and ex-presidents? Well, I'm an ex-aerospace exec myself. I have a lot of exes. Well, do you have time to talk? I mean, I don't mean to drop in on you like this, but I just happen to be... Uh... Driving by the airfield and thought you'd drop in? I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, somebody really should have called you, uh, but is there someplace we could talk? I mean, maybe we could wait till your lunch hour, if that's better. No, come on. So that was your entry-level position? Mm-hmm. Coffee? Thank you. Then I worked my way up into the design group. Did you ever hear of the B2, Muriel? Mm-hmm. I worked on that wing. It's a beautiful thing, that sweep. I used to dream about that. Did you ever dream about your work? 
All too often. Well, I craved those dreams. But you want to know how it fell apart and stayed apart, don't you? Yeah. I've been living with this woman for some time. And things have been really bad between us. When he told her he was leaving, she threatened to commit suicide. And then when he left her, she threw herself off the balcony. <gasps> Yeah, yeah, and obviously she survived. She told the police that he pushed her. Do you believe him? I don't know. You know, even after he served his time, he couldn't get his job back. You know, he, he couldn't get any job, despite the fact that he had very impressive references. Hold it just a second here. What does this guy look like? I know where you're headed. And I know where you're headed. Well, you're ridiculous, Andrea. This, you know, this is an assignment. It is interesting because he's not your... Typical whiny spousal abuser. Oh, you mean like Everett and Madison? Oh, well, you know, I should speak with more respect of the main character of my book, but Don is nothing like that wacko. Don. Oh, okay. Andrew, come on. You know, I'm never going to see him again. Don. I, you know, I have all the information I need. Just, you know, you know, the police never, never asked any of the neighbors if they'd heard her screaming at him. Hmm. No, they, they never even checked out to see what her hysterical past was like. They just accepted her story that she was pushed. It's so interesting watching how they do these investigations, you know, because they, they basically ruined his life. Well, yeah, that's cops for you. They're always persecuting innocent men. <clears throat> <clears throat> Yet, I think I made it pretty clear that I'll meet him wherever he wants. I mean, that's his call. Yep, that's his call, too. Okay. Look, I just want to get the story. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. Thanks. Bye. So you're getting closer to Deep Throat, too? Huh. It's like trying to get an interview with Prince Philip. Got to get past the court here, you know? Lawyers, guy's scared. People in the department find out he's yakking, his career's over. So why is he doing it? Conscience, ambition. People want to get the story out. Bad apple in the department, they want the public to know. Which reminds me, how about Vic? He give you an article? Uh-huh. Yeah? Tell me. Um, Don Bigelow is an ex-aerospace executive who claims he was framed for attempted murder. Yeah? You gonna do it? interesting, yeah. Thank yeah? Mm -hmm. Date sitting around the house, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You in the mood? Yeah, okay. I'll do right back. Just a minute. Okay. Habits are excellent. I particularly like how she listens to other students participating without competing with them. You know, is that good or is that too passive? Oh, she's definitely not a follower either. She has her own mind. Yeah. The one thing that does bother me, me, Mrs. Davidson, and uh, I'm not sure how to say this, it's your novel. It's a sensitive subject. Don't tell me she's read it. No, I don't think so. But I have overheard things that suggest some of her friends have, and they may have read passages to her. Oh, great. You might look for an opportunity to explain to her why you wrote it, what it means to adults. Oh, okay. Nice to see you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. See ya. Hey, Mom. Hey. Hey, hey What are you guys doing here? Ah, uh, boring teacher conference. Mimi Gray. Mimi Gray. Are you coming with us? Well, no, it's Friday. Remember, I have swim meet and then the deans bring me home. Oh, yeah. Well, see you at home then. Yep, yeah, bye. 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 So long. Hmm. Well, why did I write it? <sighs> your novel? I always thought it was some sort of exorcism. You know, anybody with your childhood. Well, I can't tell Mimi that. Besides, it's not about my childhood. Oh, come on. Strictly speaking, no. But, you know, you could have been Martha Sullivan if you weren't so strong. And the kids who have parents like yours who hit them and kicked them and locked them up in the cellar, they become the Martha Sullivans of the world. What makes you think I'm so strong? I mean, Muriel, Martha, Muriel, Martha. You know what I'd like? I'd like an afternoon alone with your parents. If they weren't gone already. Yeah. Uh, never mind. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Take care.
So you were just driving to Tacoma, and you thought you'd drop in, huh? No, I I thought I needed more. I, I don't think I got enough on one interview. Do you have some time to show me? I could leave this. You want to take a drive? <sighs> ben, I was in AA for a while. Hmm. You were too, huh? You can tell. How? Am I right? Yeah. Good drink. What a consolation. I was terrified of everything. I was terrified of going to prison, terrified of being convicted for something I hadn't done, terrified that maybe I had done it when I was blind drunk. You don't seem like the type. You mean to abuse women? Mm -hmm. No, it's not really my thing. Which is not to say we didn't throw things at one another once in a while, or not that they didn't connect once in a while. They did, but I was never into hitting people. Did I tell you that I was in the mountains when she fell? No. I kept thinking to myself, this is ridiculous. They're not doing this to me. They're going to find out I was hiking, and they're going to let me go. But they didn't. Pull over a No. They listened to her. Quiet, isn't it? Yeah. You know... When the verdict actually came in, I, I, I didn't get it. I actually thought the jury foreman misspoke. And when it sank in, well, I said to myself, because no one else was particularly interested, I said, okay, Don, you have a choice. You can either let your anger eat you alive or you can accept it. I accepted it. Oh, it was hard. But I accepted it. I have a husband and child I love very much. doesn't. So, how many jobs did you apply for before you got this one? 260. No, I'm serious. So, how did you get this job? I cried. I broke down when I didn't get it. Hey, not in front of the personnel director, but on the way back to my truck, and he happened to be standing at the window, thought he'd take a gamble on me. Yeah, we'll have to head back if I want to avoid the traffic. Am I going to see you again, Martha? What'd you say? Muriel. I'm sorry. What are you reading that for? Um, I'm just uh, looking to see how I'd phrase something. Um, have you seen my coat? Um, between Dad's and mine in the front hall. Okay. I'm picking you up after school, getting your hair cut. Okay. Oh, okay. He was tall, marvelously handsome. He looked different in his prison shirt, boyish, vulnerable, but still darkly handsome. 
His collar laid softly against the thick, creamy skin on his neck. It was the first time he said my name. So your name is Martha Sullivan. I've seen you in court every Wednesday, so I've called you the Wednesday woman. We shared something very special that day, Martha. We made love. Everett, please, don't say love. I say love because I feel love for you. Stop. Stop it. I have a husband and a ten-year-old son I adore. I have a husband and child I love very much. Who doesn't? Wait a minute, wait a minute. How do I know it? Hold on a second. Mimi, give me a kiss. Bye-bye. Bye, Mimi. Okay, look. You know, I don't have any trouble being there. You know, I don't want to waste a lot of afternoons. Okay, great. Good. Okay, okay, good. Bye. Hun, that was Roy. I, I may be late. Are you going to be here this afternoon? Planning my day around Mimi's hair. Good. Any luck with Roy? Yeah, well, you know, Captain X, he's going to meet with me if his schedule permits or if his astrologer okays him to speak on the 11th and if he likes the way I look from behind sometime during the day when he knows I'm not looking. You'd think I was interviewing Sammy the Bull. Oh, him. How's your thing going? What's your article doing? It's all done. Done? Yeah, uh-huh. You're kidding me. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, you keep pounding these out. You could pay for the old college tuition, the French lessons, the swimming lessons, you know? Besides, you're a lot happier when you work. Yeah. Psychiatrists and business counselors and housekeepers. That's housekeeper. right. That's it. That's housekeeper. it. You got it. Thank you. Goodbye. That's great. On this episode of Insider, we will take you into the invisible world of illegal immigration. The Pacific Northwest has become a point of entry for hundreds of monthly arrivals from Asia and the Pacific Rim. Tonight, we will explore the conditions that have created this current influx of Asian immigration. Their story is both inspiring and horrific. Stay with us. That's a cut. Okay, pretty good. Let's go back. Bill, you have a visitor? Let's go back. Can we get makeup in here? Yeah, I'm in. Muriel. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi, thanks. I thought uh, maybe I'd buy you lunch. Are you busy? Oh, yeah. I got to have a meeting with the editors. Any other time would have been great. Um... You sh okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Is everything okay? Oh, yeah, fine. Sure. Are you okay? Oh, sure. No, I, just, I, you know, I thought that a husband and wife should have lunch together. That's all. Absolutely. You know, just say the word and I'll cancel. I'll be happy to. No, if you do, then I'll feel guilty and we'll deal with that for days. You know, I'll see if George Vick is free. You sure? Uh-huh. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, I know. Bye. See you later. Bye. Is that feeling? Yes, exactly. The thing is, you don't even think about it as being on the receiving end because you take it so for granted. <sighs> You know, my, my dad used to beat me. Mine did too. I used to say to myself, all right, he'll do it until I am old enough to fight back or until I leave, whichever comes first. And he did, until I was 15 years old. I left home at 15. I bet you didn't beat your father up before you left. No. I did. Made me cry. <laughs> Yours, I would have liked to have beaten up. Oh, that's what Bill. That's what your husband said. Hey, I think he felt that way. 
But you see, the thing is that unless you've been there, you can't possibly understand the damage that's been done. They think that all you got to do is beat up the bully, and it's all over, right? But it's not like that, is no, it? No, it's not. It's not that simple. No. You know, you can fool the whole world, but you can't fool Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. Who? The eyes on the billboard over the ash heap in The Great Gatsby. So where did all this take place, anyway? Minnesota. I've never been there. Oh, I don't know how much you missed. Well, I like to travel. Well, so do I, but Italy, not Minnesota. Uh, fish out of water there. Kill it before it kills you. Yeah. You know it was sick? I still wanted my father to love me, even when I was older. And I understood how sick he was. I still needed his love. I kept thinking, if I do this, or if I do that, he would change. I'm, you know, I'm so sorry. I was interviewing someone and I completely forgot. That's not an excuse. It's just, it's just what happened. You okay? How'd she get home? The Regals. I was in Tacoma when she paid, so she stood out in the cold without her jacket for about an hour. Oh, Mom, it was cold out there and I didn't even know where you were. Honey, I'm... T you got some soup. Uh, would you like some hot chocolate or something? Would you like me to make you some hot... No. Answer your cell phone. You must have called it a hundred times. Where were you? I forgot to take it. You forgot? Were you interviewing somebody? Who were you interviewing? No one important. That's that ex con, right? Yeah. Who is this guy to you? No one. Not a story. Well, you told me this morning that this story was finished. I thought it was, but then I reread parts of it, and so I just glossed over sections, and so I... Well, if it's so nothing, I mean, how come you're so engrossed in it that you leave your daughter standing in the cold for an hour? And it's not so much that you were late, you completely and totally forgot. We were talking about AA. He's in AA, and I forgot! I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave Mimi in the lurch. I didn't mean to upset you. I just... Yes, I forgot. Okay, okay. It just didn't seem like you were leveling with me there for a moment, that's all. Haven't you ever forgotten it? Anything she wanted that I could do a handstand, and she took my wallet. You couldn't do it, huh? No. 
You know, I was thinking maybe you should go to one of your meetings. Why? I'm not drinking. Oh, okay, well, then never mind. What, you think I... No, 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 it's no big deal. You know, I know. You have to want to go, so it's... never mind. You want to help me with my handstands? No, I'd rather go to a meeting. <laughs> okay. You know, one minute at a time. Oh, good. Hey! Oh, well, hi. What? You fall off the wagon? No. Oh, get my chakras aligned. <laughs> you look great. I am great. And so do you. Oh, I read your book, by the way. Oh, I had to put on asbestos gloves, but I finished it. Asbestos. Well. I said to myself, Florence girl, you may not be up to reading this. <laughs> and here I thought you were another middle class white chick. Oh, well. I'm Dave, and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Dave. I'm going to talk about personal responsibility, if I can find my place. <laughs> Good thing there's not 24 steps. <laughs> okay, here, here we are. Taking care of taking care. The easiest way to get out of a problem, uh, at least for me, is to attribute it to a cause outside yourself. For instance, to say, no one listened to me when I was a kid. That's why I started to drink. But for most of the people who come to AA, childhood's over. And going back there for explanations is just evading responsibility for here and now. I realized that I couldn't bring Randall back to life. All I could do was drink myself to death trying, which is exactly what I was doing. Drinking myself to death trying. So I came here and saved my life. But I know I got to still come because it's still there. And if I don't come, it'll grow back like a weed and kill all the good work I've done. So, okay. I'm back. Florence. Would anyone else like to talk? Muriel, good to see you again. Uh, I'm Muriel Alcoholic. Hi, Muriel. Hi, Muriel. I picked up a couple new addictions since I stopped drinking. Not just coffee and chocolates and stuff like that. It's um, that's all. Thanks, Yuri. Month, three days. Ah. Oh. It used to be my home group. <laughs> Quite a coincidence, huh? It sure seems like it. What do you think, Dave, the, the guy who led the meeting? He doesn't judge. Said AA saved his life. I believe him. So do you do you think about it? Drinking. How's work? Is that, is that going okay for you? Work is fine, Muriel. Sweeping. It's very meditative.
Do you live around here or something? Not far. I rent a room. Oh. I like your hands. I don't like them much. Oh, they're working hands. I worked for my dad coming up. Doing what? Are you in some kind of trouble? But you can tell me, you know. Muriel, I have to go to AA. It's a condition of my... Probation, yeah. Still, it's probably good to go, you know. AA's a... Uh... I don't know what I'm saying. I just want to touch you. Muriel, let's add blurting out your list of addictions. I'm gonna go. Where? I don't know. You know there's a place that we can go together. Oh, I don't think so. Muriel, why? Because of the book? The book? You, you read the book? You know I'm not going anywhere with anybody. Muriel, we each have a shadow. When I quit drinking, my shadow stood next to me every day for a year. I'd wake up every morning and say, hello, shadow. Don't. Don't, please. I'm not. were so cool. Uh, I envy sure. that. I'm always so anxious about everything. How do you get to be like that? By uh, having only yourself to take care of yourself. Well, then I should be like that. Why? No, what? Sure. Yes. My, no, really. My parents raised me with benign incomprehension. Well, <laughs> honest to God. They, Write me they, an article. Benign incomprehension. One of the ten ways to independent living. Ten steps. Right. Ten steps. <laughs> yeah. You know, the trouble today is everyone gives everyone too much space. I mean, how much space does an eight-year-old need? How tall is he? Yeah. <laughs> that that is the, my father just get drunk and whack me. That's because you're Irish. No, no, that's no. What? No, wait. That's not because... No, come on, because Muriel's father got drunk, whacked her, and he is not Irish. <laughs> Why would you say that? Did no. anyone read that article by Daphne Merkin about how she likes to be spanked? Yeah, I read that article. It was a good article. She likes to be spanked. Shut up. <laughs> Discipline deserves. <laughs> <laughs> it's the newest set. Tell everything. The more revealing, the better. I can write a novel. <laughs> Muriel. What are you doing, huh? You calling someone? No, I'm just trying to get my bearings. You know. Did you have a drink? God, no, Bill. I, I'd tell you if I fell off. Because I know you'd help me. I love you. And I love you. But what about this bottle? The bottle? This bottle in this drawer. Right here. <laughs> this is a bottle of vodka, is it not? It's a good thing I'm going to those meetings, you know. I... Let's just go back into the party, all right? Yeah, let's go. Now, how many dishes does it take to feed eight people? Eight thousand. Hey, Dad, I'm ready. Let's go. You could help. Keep going. Help. She's going to Leah's, and then Leah's mother. Oh, oh I remember. Yeah, uh, I'll finish. Now. You guys go ahead. You sure? Yeah. What time to be back? Uh, well, maybe late. We'll stop at the office. Okay, Bill. I, I want you to know that I know you're trying to protect me the same way you have since we've been kids. Hmm. And I don't know where I would be without you. 
Honestly, I don't. Well, that's good because, you know, don't have to be without me. Dad? I'm coming. I love you. So the more people who told me I was beautiful or, or sexy, the more I hated myself and the more I thought I was worthless. But I couldn't tell anyone because <laughs> they all envied me. But I was all torn up inside. And so that's when I started drinking. Because when I'm drinking, or when I was, I can forget. Oh, Muriel! Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later.
Hey. Oh. Looking for my glasses. There they are. That's nice. Thank you. Finally meeting my source, maybe. Ah. No, this time it's really going down. I feel lucky. Good. Well, you look nice. Yeah. Uh, you said that. What are you up to? I mean, nothing. Promise? I promise. Okay. you something. What do you have? You know, maybe I could get you some medicine. I love this class. I love her. She's a great instructor. Andrea. Hey. How are you? Fine. What are you doing here? You come here to ask me out? Mm, yeah. yeah. No. Well, you know, it's not a bad <laughs> idea, but no. I, I came here and I probably shouldn't have come here to ask you if you've talked to Muriel lately. About She's, what? Uh, yeah. Well, her state of mind. I mean, I'm just worried that she's uh, getting self-destructive, that she may have started drinking again. She got to her AA meetings? She says she is, but has she talked to you about any? <laughs> Not about her AA meetings. Well, has she talked to you about this ex-convict? Is she seeing this ex-con? Are you asking me to find out whether or not she's having an affair? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, what, shouldn't I? She's my best friend. I, you know, I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll keep an eye on her. I'll make sure she, she doesn't have said that. anything. No. She said nothing. No, she said nothing. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. You need a ride anywhere? No, no. Are you going to be all right? Well, yeah, considering. <laughs> Muriel? Hello?
Martha drove home from jail in a state of stunned euphoria. It was nearly five when she pulled into the driveway to find her husband, Jeff, waiting for her. All at once, she was terribly afraid. Somehow he knows where I've been and what I've done, she thought. I gotta talk to you. Jeff. Oh, God, darling, I'm so sorry. And you know? How did you find out? Oh, Martha, it's awful. My father is getting married. Again. Martha felt herself go weak with relief. There was no need for explanations right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I forgot to ask you. How'd it go today? My story? It's in the early stages. It's gonna be a good story. Oh. And what's he like? My source? Yeah. Bright. Self-educated, moral in a kind of black and white sort of way. Ah. Oh. You mean like a cop? What did you do today, Muriel? Mm, nothing. Went to a movie. What did you see? Uh, Starlings. It's pretty bad. Where'd you see it? Oh, the Theater. You know, the two o'clock show. I got there late, of course. You know, missed the previews. Girls, dinner's ready. All right, come in. Anything you want me to do? Grab a second. Yeah, just sit. I'll do it. Hi, girls. Dad, Hi. juice? Yeah, juice. Juicy juice. Look, don't make it out like I'm the crazy one here, all right? Like in your book. Like you have My a... book is fiction. Yeah, fiction? You want to hear some fiction? How about the bottle behind the bottle in the drawer, right? Which has a new price tag on it. What now. are you doing in my... Stay out of my desk. It's got nothing to do with being in your desk, Muriel. It's got to do with whether you're drinking or not. Can I get a straight answer to whether or not you're drinking? Oh, maybe I'm drinking. I'm assuming you're drinking. You're so humiliating. Okay. You're treating me like I'm a child. I'm treating you like my wife who has a problem. Well, then it's my problem. Let me deal with it. We've been dealing with this problem together for some years now. Have we not? Look, forget about the problem, all right? Forget about the drinking, forget about the bottle, all right? What about Don Wiggolo? Can you answer me this? Are you or are you not sleeping with Don Wiggolo? How about that? Can you answer that, yes or no? Look me in the eye and say yes or no. No, I'm not sleeping with Don Wiggolo. That's all I want. Well, you're not going to get that because I can't stand being spied on. I, I can't stand it. I can't stand being watched. Every time I try to help someone, people make out that I'm the one who's insane. I hate it. I hate that. From Little Remedy. You were up early. Well, I heard you guys fighting last night. Oh. Everything's fine, baby. Well, I didn't hear everything. What were you guys arguing about? Nothing. What <laughs> the parents always argue about. Have some juice, honey? Meet me up. Up, oh, fed and water. Tell him 
telling the truth. Cool. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> Suppose I told you you had to. Then I would. I'd do anything you ask. But first, I want to get you a better job. I think that would just be good. Would you give me money? Yes. Would you jump out the window for me? Gladly. Because I know you'd never ask me to. Yeah, but if I asked. Then yes. No, because of Mimi. No, I would. I couldn't do anything to hurt you. But I have to go to work. You don't have to worry about this stuff about Bill. I'll just... I'll take care of it. It'll be fine. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. Hello, goodbye. Big house in the suburbs, Bill. Is where you sleep with Muriel? Mm-mm. Not yet. You proud of that answer? Not yet? What are you doing, Wiggle What are you doing with my wife? Well, I don't think that's any of your concern, Bill. Don't call me Bill. I'm trying to save my family and protect my wife. What are you doing, Wiggle That's what I want to know. What are you doing? Bill, when you and Muriel have sex, does she like it? Or you? you to wiggle those apart. Oh, God. Oh, please say you didn't. Yeah, no, uh, I don't know how I did it, but I managed to beat the crap out of them. Bill, I went there to break it off. Now, oh, Muriel, stop lying, okay? You didn't kill him, did you? Muriel, why don't you go on over there and check him out? <coughs> how could I not want to help someone who was so kind and gentle? And has been so cruelly judged. Like poor Everett Madison. Oh, God, that's what you think. What? Don is, a, is an aerospace executive. He's not a criminal. He's a good, sensitive, gentle man. Well, why can't I do good works without getting punished? I mean, why? Well, like Martha Sullivan. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go. What? No, oh, wait. Now, look, if you walk out that door, I promise you I'm not gonna be here when you get back. I'm going. One way or another, I am leaving. So you get out of my way. Muriel. Get Mur out of my way!
Mom? Mimi, I'm in the kitchen. Dad? Hey, Dad. Yeah? What happened to your hands? I fell. But why are the bags packed? We're gonna have to go and we're gonna have to stay somewhere else for a while, okay? You just trust me on this, all right? You trust me? Where's Mom? Mom's out. Mom's out. We're out just where? Just, just don't make me repeat myself, okay? Just just grab this and let's go. Just Dad. Dad. Hello. Uh, well, okay, then uh, I don't authorize any more money to be withdrawn on that account unless I countersign. I'll be uh, in first thing in the morning. Thanks, bye. What's going on, Dad? I've got come a right on, to on. know. Just come on, I'll explain it to Can't you. Can't you just tell? Come on, we'll talk about it on the way, all right? How come we're leaving if she's leaving? We're, we're all leaving. We're leaving the house for a few days. Well, how come? Because the house is disputed territory. Disputed how? What is going on? Mom, it's, you know, Mom, Mom's great when she's great, but when she's got stuff she's afraid of and she... It's the old Mom thing, right? You know, when she's great, she's wonderful, but when she's scared, she falls apart. And I don't think you should be here. What does she have to be scared of? I don't know. You know, she's scared. She's got a lot of stuff to work out. So, come on, get in the car, please. If she's afraid, then how come we're leaving her? Mimi, I don't want to stand around in the parking lot and talk about it all day. It's another guy, isn't it? No, it's not another guy. Just like in the book. No, 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 no. It's not another guy. It's not, okay? No, you're lying. I can tell when you're lying. Okay. Just can you get in the car? No, I'm not leaving, and you can't make me. Martha appeared to be heading toward a lethal conclusion of her own making. She was in denial. Her therapist, Bill Harnicky, was angry with himself. Not for the first time, he felt inadequate and afraid. After Martha had gone, Harnicky leaned back in his chair. He could feel Martha's cold stare cut through the busy medical center parking lot, oblivious to anyone around her. And as he watched her walk toward her car, he thought, she was lost to him now. Hello? You messed up, Bill. Can I help you? You Bill Davidson? Yes, sir, I am. I'm afraid you're going to have to come with me. You're under arrest for assault. Tonight on LMN. My daughter's missing. Why does mom get to live in the house? Maybe that's just the way it is, you know? Okay. You ready for this? I should have let us go the first time, and then you wouldn't have been arrested. Well, that's... That's not true. I mean, the police aren't that stupid, maybe. They would have found me anyway. Besides, this way you stayed at Andrea's mom doesn't know, so don't tell her, okay? Okay. All right. I'm gonna go make sure everything's okay. She's not going to come in if you've been drinking, okay? Let's not draw this out more than we have to, okay? Okay. You know, you should give me a number where you are in case I need you. A phone number in case I need to get in touch with you. Right. I'll be in the car, or I'll be around here while you guys visit. 
Well, when is your court date? You know, I, I told uh, Don to drop the charges, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he will. Oh, yeah? Is that what Don said? Well, I don't see him all that much. I'm here most of the time, but yeah, I think he will. Uh-huh. You know? He's not who you think he is, you know. You know, I don't have to listen to this. I'm just trying to make the best of things. All right. Mimi! 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 What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? What about Mom? She's waiting for you. I just, I don't think I'm ready to see her yet. <laughs> now you tell us. Why didn't you say something before we came all the way over here? Sorry. Well, you go tell her. Dad. What, I gotta tell her? Yes. Come around. I'll call you. Of course you feel bad, Muriel. You're supposed to feel bad. You're the worst kind of sinner there is. You tried to be happy. And where you come from, that is the worst sin of all. Isn't that what they always told you? That you're bad. And you believed them. I bet they told you you were bad to write your book. That it's bad to write about bad girls. You bought into it so much, you killed off poor Martha Sullivan. Don. I'd like you to think about dropping the charges against Bill. And what? And letting Bill hit somebody else? Huh? And let him go and... I mean, has Bill done any work on himself? Has Bill been to AA? No. You know, you had Martha Sullivan whore for Everett Madison, but you want me to release a man who almost killed me. I give up everything for you. Because you believed in me. Because I am you. They don't get us. They don't see who we are, do they? Except I haven't started drinking again, and you have. Why? Because you're guilty. Martha had a son taken away. You had a daughter. Martha did drugs. You drank. Martha couldn't handle her guilt. You can't handle your guilt. You disgust me, Muriel. Oh, I disgust myself. Is that why we come here instead of to your place? Of course. This is all you deserve. I want you to pick up that phone and I want you to call your husband. And I want you to tell him that he cannot go around beating up people who are weaker than he is. I, I don't know where he's staying. And call his office and leave a message on the machine. I, I, I can't do that. I don't. I don't really don't want to. I don't want you to do no. that. You understand? No, no, you no, tell no, what you want. No, I want you to no, call it. I no, want you no, to do no, Okay, okay. No, okay, no, okay, no. okay, okay, okay. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm here. Oh. It's okay. I'm here. Oh. I'm here. Oh. It's okay. I'm here. Muriel, I'm sorry. I, I just, I completely lost my head. You know, I mean, 
It just hurts me when... Mom, it's uh, me. I'm just calling to say hi. And... Anyhow, um, I miss you, okay? See you, Mom. Mimi? Hello, Mimi? Oh. Oh. Hey, Bill, what you reading? Mm -hmm. Is that your wife's book? I heard uh, you need asbestos gloves to read it. Yeah, they come with it. Well, pass it along when you're done, okay? I could use a good read. Everett pinned Martha against the headboard. Her eyes darted furtively around the room. Then, suddenly, Martha lunged for the gun. <laughs> La la Eileen Botchner? You must be Bill Davidson. Right. Uh, how did you find me? Well, I actually used county records. And I uh, just want to thank you for meeting me on such short notice, Miss Botchner. Oh, Eileen, please. So, what can I do for you, Mr. Davidson? You said you were for that TV show, The Insider. Oh, well, this has absolutely nothing to do with my TV show. Nothing. This is about uh, Spencer ex boyfriend. Don Wigelow. Um, my wife has been going out with him. How does that concern me? Well, technically, it doesn't. But I was hoping... Uh, I've read his history. And uh, I was actually hoping that it might have been one-sided or... and that you could reassure me in some way that... Uh, he wasn't actually going to hurt my wife. I can't give you that assurance, Mr. Davidson. You can't. Okay. Look, uh... There are times when Don is just like you or me. He's a funny, sensitive, normal guy. And then there are times when he isn't. Um, when something sets him off. Yeah. Women, usually. Right. And then what? Don't feel... What's she doing here? She's my friend. I couldn't turn her away. It's okay. Hey. Mimi? Can I talk to Mom alone for a minute? Yeah, come on. Let's play some computer games, Mame. It's okay. Dad? If uh, Mom wants to come back, it's okay with me. Okay. Thank you. 
Muriel, I thought that we agreed that all visits would go through me, that you'd call and I'd... I'm sorry. I, I tried to find you at the office. Yeah, but what's so urgent that it couldn't wait? Well, it's over with Don. And I couldn't bear not seeing Mimi one more minute. Boy, you really don't expect me to believe all this, do you? You know where I just was? You're not going to believe this, but I was just talking to an ex-girlfriend of his. Yeah. And if a neighbor hadn't heard her screaming, she wouldn't be alive today. He tried to strangle her because she burned a pot. I hate that, too. <laughs> what? Well, okay. Nobody's defending her, but... Now, I don't want to interfere with you and me. Maybe the... It's just, it's just going to take a long time before I'm comfortable with the fact that this guy's around, you know, and isn't going to hurt her. So I can't just let you see her at will. I understand. You do? Yeah. Well, that's good. We agree on something. Bill. Do you remember that abandoned house that we broke into and, and lived in for a week? I think it was the first time I ran away from my parents. Uh, we cooked on Sterno or something. I think we were 18, and you decided to rescue me once and for all. What do you want, Muriel? No, nothing. I... I was just remembering and thinking about the, the snow coming through that hole in the roof. Thinking it was funny, you know, snowing inside a house. Leave a message and we'll call you back. Hi, it's me. Are you there? Oh. I dreamt about that house, the one you, uh, where it snowed. Look, uh, we could, uh, try and meet somewhere today. I have an hour around 4, 4, 4.30. Yeah, I just thought we could meet. I left a message, but she hasn't called me back. It's always been my job to protect Muriel. I feel like I'm not doing my job. Does she ever tell you where they meet? No. What? Do me a favor and pick Mimi up at school, will you? Well, wait a second. Where are you going? Wait a minute, Bill. What? It's not enough to wish that we didn't do something. We have to make what we did do right. Only after we have tried to right wrongs and swallowed whatever we have to to do that can we honestly say we have a clean slate. coming <laughs> you know I, I didn't want to leave it well the way I left it I, I I wanted to have some closure yeah 
Yeah, me too. I was surprised when you left. Not that I blame you at all, but I was surprised. I, <laughs> I was in the bathroom apologizing to you, and, and I walked out, and I was apologizing, you know, to the air. Well, I'm sorry. I, I want to make an amends. I shouldn't have left without saying something. None of this should have happened. It's funny. I was just thinking this whole thing should never have ended. You know, Don, you are not Everett, but you sure remind me of him sometimes. I felt and, and I still feel that, that you got the raw deal that he pretended to get. But that doesn't justify anything. Else. I fell in love, but not with a real person. Oh, that's funny. I could have sworn I was a real person. I'm gonna go. Muriel, let's make love one last time. You know, I don't think it's a good idea. No. I think we've been doing things your way for too long. You've been calling all the shots. Let's do this. Down, let's do that. I didn't pursue you. You pursued me. You said, let's make love. Let's fall in love. Let's heal each other. But when I want to do something, no, 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 no! How does making love to me hurt you? I don't want to. I didn't want to. When I was a little boy, my mother would go out after I'd gone to bed, and she would lock the door and turn on all the lights. But I would wake up, and I would know that she was gone. Then I was afraid to call her, because she might not answer. And I was afraid to go out and look for her, because she might not be there. And I was afraid to be in my bed, because the monsters might come in. You know, parents can be very, very cruel. But I learned something. I learned that as you get older, there are lots of women who are willing to make it up to you. Hey, what's your hurry, baby? Are you gonna kill me? Oh, what's your hurry, Muriel? We've waited this long. Muriel! Bill! Ah! Muriel! Mimi sent me. Oh. Yeah, she's uh, concerned that something like this can happen again. Mm. And then there's the fear of us having to go to court. But, uh, you know, I told her the charges have been dismissed. Mm. I am a little concerned that this guy is still alive. <sighs> well, it's probably going to take a while, you know. Yeah. You know, the other day I realized that I'd gotten into the habit of treating you like a case. So I wanted to say I'm sorry.
for whatever it's worth. It's worth a lot. And I am infinitely more sorry. Yeah, I guess it's just easier, you know, to play a role. Me, the stoic, good guy husband, and you, the vulnerable, unpredictable, you know what. <laughs> well, that's one way of describing it. It's not going to happen again. It's not, huh? Mm -mm. You no. sure? I'm sure of it. Well, that's good. That would be good. It would be good. Mm.